Hi, and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about some more stuff to do in Twine. Today, I'm going to be looking at how you can use videos in Twine. Why would you want to use videos in Twine? Well, I think they actually make things look uh, a lot better than usual. They could make your game really stand out on the itch.io store page, and they raise things up to a little bit more of a kind of professional looking standard. If we have a quick look here at the game that I made, and let me double check that there's no music playing in the background because this game does have some music, very ominous. Uh, you can see that I'm using video as a background in Twine just makes things look a little, uh, a little cooler, I think. So, uh, how did I do that? Well, it's uh, kind of a three-part story. There are three different main ways to work with video in Twine. I'm going to talk about two of them today, uh, but the third one really requires a video all of its own. The first two ways to work with video in Twine are to use files that you have access to somewhere and to either work with those offline, which is probably the easiest way to do things, but comes with some additional complications, to work with things online with files that you have access to yourself but that you're hosting somewhere and that can be kind of complicated because uh, a lot of services these days would prefer that you stream video from them rather than having access to the file directly and that's cool we can work with that and the third way then is to use those streaming sites using something like youtube or vimeo and that comes with all sorts of complications uh, that requires a little bit of massaging of Twine to actually make it look good. And to be specific here, what I mean is Twine Harlow, the kind of basic out-of-the-box version that you'll use if you start the browser. Um, if you try this in Twine Sugarcube, uh, it's actually a lot easier and there's some little things that you can use to uh, work around and make things look better. But for now, let's just talk about these two uh, ways of working. What I showed you just there was an online version of a Twine game. Uh, but for now, I want to show you what it looks like if we were to work offline, if we were to work using uh, files that we have on our computer. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do in a passage, if we want to have a video file present, is to include this video element. Now, you might also notice that I have these three curly braces here. If you're new to Twine, you might not know what those are. Essentially, those are telling Twine, hey Twine, I love your style, but for right now, I don't want to use it. Just let me use my own style sheet or no style at all. So that ignores Twine's built-in style sheet for uh, a little bit. And then you make sure to have three curly braces that close that off. And so anything contained within that will ignore Twine's built-in style sheet. Um, within this section, I have got a video element. Now, the video element is a little bit different to how we would use things with, say, an image, where you would have image, source, and then you would have kittens.jpg, and that would be the end of your image, and your image would appear, and you could then add some you know, style to that and have it be as wide as you want it to be or whatever. Uh, working with images, that's the way it goes. Working with videos, you can do it that way. There definitely is a HTML5 way of doing that, but my preferred method is to use the video element, which is kind of like a canvas for your videos to be shown on. And what you do is declare this empty video element and give it some properties. In my case, I've said the video element should autoplay, it should be mu muted, and it should loop. That's useful if your video is your background, say, but obviously if you have video that has got lots of audio in it and dialogue and stuff like that, you would want to get rid of that muted uh, property and have the video play with all of its sound. Looping as well is something you would consider whether you want it to loop or not loop. With that declared, you might also have noticed that I have an ID here. The ID links to how I've styled my video elements in my style sheet. So if I go and look at the CSS style sheet for this, you'll see that I have uh, an element in there, a set of rules for my video. And I'll get to that in just a second. 
For now, though, I'll talk about this, the source. And you'll notice that my source is very small. It just says video playback.mp4. And this is where things get a little complicated. If I was to try and run this twine from here, you'll notice... Yeah, no, no audio playing, which is good. You'll notice that there's no video. Why is that? You saw that the video worked just a second ago, so what's wrong? Well, the thing is, when you're using Twine in your browser, like I am right now, and like most people will do, um, Twine tries to build Twine games in your temporary folder on your computer, and there's no file called videoplayback.mp4. However, if you were to say make a folder on your uh, computer somewhere, a local folder that contained both the Twine HTML that you get by building your Twine and exporting it to a file and having all the assets in that folder that you want to address, then you can just pull up the file by saying videoplayback.mp4 or kittens.jpg. You don't need to have the whole URL file address. What that means is if you're sharing this with somebody else, you'll need to share the whole folder with them and not just the HTML twine, because obviously it's going to be trying to grab assets from a folder uh, that's unique to your computer. Okay, so that's just one slight complication there to be aware of if you're working uh, offline with twine. However, it is still pretty easy to do it this way. You get these nice short file addresses. And if we build the game from our HTML in that local folder, you'll see that it starts up absolutely fine and gives us our video exactly as we would expect. Okay, so nice and easy to work with and no further complications. So that's working with videos offline. You need your video element, you need your source, and you need to make sure that the video files you have are in the same folder as the HTML that will launch your Twine game. But how did I get that video to appear as the background? Well, that is all done through style sheet. And you might not want to do this with your background images, but it definitely is an option. And I think it makes games look really cool really quickly. Uh, what I've done in this game is use one ID. And you can tell the difference between an ID and a class based on whether there is a full stop or a hashtag before the word that you're using. In this case, it's a hashtag. So this is an ID rather than a class. And this ID is my video. I've used the keyword position fixed. That means that this object will appear in a very specific place relative to your browser window. It's not going to resize. And I've said that this will appear starting from the very bottom right, okay? Bottom zero, right zero. So it's going to be skewed all the way to the bottom right hand corner. And then it has a minimum width and a minimum height of 100%. So it's going to take up 100% of the viewport from that, starting from that bottom right, okay? So in other words, this is going to be full screen in a fixed position. So any element that I have that is called my video will appear in this way. Now, this isn't unique to working with video files. If I wanted to, I could say, make my video just be the color blue. And then if I jump back to my story, quickly edit this, get rid of the video and replace the video with just an empty div called my video, run it from here. The game builds as normal, but with a blue background instead of that video. Okay. So nothing terribly complicated going on there. It's just about how we're using the ID to play things. Um, oh, something I've never tried. If I test from here. Yeah. Okay. So style sheet has rule over the passage, which is good to know. So I'll make sure that I get rid of that background blue in our style sheet. Hooray, our background video is back. Okay, cool. So that's working with videos offline and understanding how to make them backgrounds as well. The last thing I'm going to look at in the video today is how you would work with videos that are hosted online. 
and specifically when you have the exact file address of a video not using something like YouTube, although that is an option that I can explore in another video. Uh, here, what I've done is link to a file that's stored on my GitHub, okay? So on this GitHub page that I have, uh, github.com is a great website for storing things like code and running things like web pages can be run directly off of GitHub, which is fantastic. But I have a repository here, which is kind of like a folder on your, your GitHub. On there, I've stored video and I've some, stored some other Twine games that you're free to look at, by the way. Now, if I was to try and grab this video, uh, directly from Twi uh, the GitHub using the same method that you might be used to, where you just steal the URL and try to copy and paste it into the address bar here. And try to test from here, you'll notice that we don't get our video, okay? So this is something that you need to be aware of. You have to make sure that you're grabbing the exact right file address. The first thing you can try is right clicking on where it says raw, uh, right underneath my image there. Uh, you can see raw. If you right click on that and copy that link, you can then paste that into your source. And sometimes that is enough. So if I test from here, you'll notice our video is back. Hooray, which is great. However, I'll be honest, I haven't always had the best of luck with this. So sometimes it's best to use a slightly different file address. And you do this by getting rid of the word raw here in the URL that'll be generated. And if you get rid of that, and instead of using github.com, you use the address raw.github user content raw.github user content.com uh, that gives you an even more direct link to the file and I found that with larger videos it's necessary to use that slightly more convoluted file address to make sure that you get uh, direct contact. Now why would everybody not just use this? Well you see there's a slight complication with github GitHub is not great for using large files. It doesn't really like it when you store lots of big video on it. Um, if you try to upload something that's more than 25 megabytes, uh, I think even sometimes more than 12 megabytes, depending on the, the user type you are, it will get mad at you. So there are ways to work around that. The main way to work around that is to make sure that you're actually running what's called uh, Git and making sure that you are using Git properly uh, with an offline file or a file that's stored on your local computer that's communicating with GitHub itself. It's kind of a complicated process and I can talk about that in another video if it's something that you're interested in working with Twine and Git. Um, but the other thing to do is just always make sure that your videos are small, short, 720p compressed video that will work seamlessly with your online Twines anyway. If you're doing that, then GitHub, I think, is a great resource for you to use with your Twine games, especially with video. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope that that clears things up and shows you just how easy it is to work with Twine and video. And if you have any more questions or any more Twines that you would like me to make, just let me know in the comments below and I'll go ahead and make those for you.